I am so excited to jump into our conversation with Sandy and Wade Critides uh, today. I hope I didn't slaughter that too much. You got it. Okay, good. <laughs> this amazing young couple have achieved success in network marketing very quickly, and we can't wait to hear all about the journey that brought them here. But first, I'm going to share more about who they are. Sandy and Wade have known each other since birth, as their parents were family friends. They reunited in their mid-20s. Wade was a VP at a finance firm, and Sandy was a small business owner. They desire to build, their desire to build a life together led them back to Southern California, and through personal growth and the search for what they were truly meant to do, they found their passion together and now help people live a life they desire through purpose, good health, and development. They love empowering people to know they can live the life of their dreams. Sandy and Wade have built a very successful global network marketing business and are in the top 1% of their 40-year-old network marketing company. They have their own podcast called Getting Magnetic with Sandy and Wade, are co-founders of their own investment firm, and have pu and published authors of the number one journal for network marketing professionals. They love helping people become the CEO of their own lives through personal development, law of attraction, and visual visualization. Yay! Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be here, <laughs> hang out with you guys today, have this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's just get have everybody get to know you a little bit better. Tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get introduced to network marketing? Did you find it? Did it find you? Just all the things. I love this question. So it's funny. I've heard of network marketing for years and I honestly, I was a person that fell into the school of thought that it was sounded too good to be true. I just was like, how does this work? I don't think I would be good at this. I saw a lot of people doing it wrong or doing it in a way that felt it just wasn't attractive to me. Um, and so how my company came into my life was summer of 2018 by the way of the products, actually, I had no intention of doing the business whatsoever, but I saw the products transform my sister's health. And then I thought, wow, if this could do this for her, like someone that I actually know and love, I wonder what it could do for me. But I told her, do not have anyone in the company reach out to me. I'm not interested in the business opportunity at all, but I didn't know what it was. And so I think the most expensive thing you can have is a closed mind. I'm so grateful that I came with an open mind and an open heart, asked a lot of questions and came to realize I really would be good at this if I, you know, was coachable and followed the steps. And so, um, yeah, I would say when you're seeking something, it's seeking you. So I don't really know if I found it or if it found me, but it was divine timing. <laughs> for sure. And I think for, for me to backtrack a little bit, you know, at that point, when Sandy started her business two and a half years ago, we were months from getting married. She was working full time, actually, in, in real estate and business side. I was working full time in finance. So we had a lot on our plate. And you typically think like starting another business, be, you know, starting a, a business, even though it's turnkey and it's e-commerce, um, probably it's like, whoa, what? You're doing a lot. You're planning a wedding and, and working full time and you're starting a business. That's crazy. But I remember looking at it and Sandy, you know, was super passionate about it because she had gone through kind of her own transformation to an extent and thought, I got to help other people do this. But to backtrack before then, I grew up in the Northeast, in the Boston area, and I kind of took the, the typical route, I'll call it, or what I knew is typical, where you go to school, you go to college, you know, if you want to be successful, you go get a business degree. I actually ended up getting my master's degree in finance and thought, gosh, I better go into this, you know, I better go into the corporate world, I better use these degrees. So I went into the finance world, doing Wall Street type of, of work. And I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it at all. I think a lot of people don't like their job. I thought I came in super ambitious, like I got to climb the corporate ladder, thinking I'll get to a point where I'm making good money and all will be well. But I, you know, I did that. And so five, seven years in, I started to reevaluate. And I started to think, okay, I've done, I've climbed the corporate ladder. I'm now a VP in my finance firm. I am making a good, you know, income. I'm living downtown in the penthouse and like everything looks good on paper, but inside there, there wasn't fulfillment. I thought, whoa, am I just going to keep doing this? I thought when the money was there, fulfillment, happiness would be there. It wasn't. And I wasn't unhappy, but I thought 
am I just going to keep doing this in the rat race until I'm in my fifties or sixties and I can retire and then start to like take control over my time. I had no control over my time. I would work for the weekends or night where I'd watch like TV and Netflix and do it all over again. I'd work for my like two weeks vacation a year. And I started to think this doesn't work for me. And like Sandy said, when you're seeking something and seeking you, I started to personally develop myself, read books, surround myself with different people. And I, at first wanted to start a coaching business. Well, Sandy started her, her network marketing business. And I realized, oh my gosh, she, she's coaching people in health, in business, in their mindset. She's developing people. She's developing leaders. So she's really impacting and leveraging her impact way more than I could one-on-one. So after six months of her saying, do this with me, like, let's do this together. You'd be really good at this. I figured what I got to get over myself. I got to get over my damn self. I'll jump in with you. And so we've partnered together for the last two years and it's been nothing short of just amazing. And our, we really feel like our purpose now is like you guys to educate on the profession and make it professional and, and make sure we keep moving towards, it is a profession. It's viable. It's truly, I think the best form of entrepreneurship I've ever seen. And I evaluate this from like a business standpoint. Like I looked at the business model. I was like, this is genius. Like this is, in my opinion, the best form of entrepreneurship. So that's a little bit about our story. I get super fired up about it. One thing I'd love to add before we keep going is just that our story is not typical. Like mm -hmm. we, you know, this business isn't easy, but it's simple. And when, you know, I'm a big believer sometimes that when you're really hungry for change, like I was, I was unhappy in what I was doing for work at the time that, you know, your circumstances can change in a short amount of time with a lot of grit, with a lot of consistency, with a lot of late nights and early mornings and hard work. So I just want to stress, it's easy to look at us from the outside and think, oh my gosh, it happened so quickly for them. But people don't see, you know, the behind the scenes mm -hmm. work and all the unsexy things that we do consistently. You know, you only get um, recognized in public for what you consistently do in private. And so I just really want to stress that our story is not typical and we've worked really hard to get where we are. And to just quick add to that too, we realized we weren't afraid to work hard. We just wanted to work hard for something that we felt good about, that we were passionate about, that was building, you know, our own business versus someone else's dream. So we worked hard. We definitely worked hard. And, and to, we still do. And we still do. And to wrap up the story, like Sandy was able to walk away from real estate. I was able to walk away from finance. And now we focus on kind of building our own businesses, which we're just really passionate about. I love that. I love um, what you were touching upon, Wade, about uh, coaching and that you were thinking about being a coach and that you were watching Sandy and, and thinking, well, that's what she's doing. I feel like one of the biggest challenges we have with this business is people don't really have an accurate perception of what it looks like. So I'm so glad you said that about coaching because I think people see it as just, you know, you set up this little shop and you're selling things mm -hmm. and they don't really get what you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. So I love the way you two interact. Was I have to just ask you, when you got back together in your 20s, was it love at first sight? <laughs> absolutely definitely <laughs> like I knew at first sight I didn't say it right away but I was like is she feeling the same way turns out she felt the same way and you know the rest is history that's a whole nother podcast <laughs> yes I can see why where did you guys like each other when you were little or how little were you when you had seen each other before well it's funny we literally have a picture of us in 1990 when we were both one years old kissing in one so funny. Yep. Um, but the last time I really remember seeing him was probably when we were 16 or 17, his family came out to California and like all of us siblings played like hide and seek together. And I just remember being like, he's cute. But like, <laughs> we were like young. And then yeah, a few years later, um, it's actually so interesting how it happened. I'm such a big believer that like things don't happen by accident, but my mom and Wade's mom were dear friends and my mom unexpectedly passed away about eight years ago. And when that happened, it kind of rocked my world. And so I um, quit my job. I had no direction. I had no idea what I was doing. I went to Boston to go be with Wade's mom because she was my mom's dear friend. And I wanted to be around like maternal energy. I wanted to grieve with someone that loved my mom the way I did. And I was only supposed to be there for a few days and then take the train from Boston to Philly and to go visit my aunt. And the exact train I was supposed to get on crashed on its way to get me. And so I spent an extra four days there and his mother was busy working and she's like, honey, I wasn't planning on you staying extra time. Like Wade's going to have to entertain you. 
And it just ended up being like, I just look at the whole thing now. And I'm like, if my mom were still alive, I wouldn't have quit my job. I wouldn't have gone on that trip. That train wouldn't have crashed. Like Wade and I literally would not have this life together now if my mom was still alive. So, you know, sometimes your mess can become your message. And sometimes there's so many blessings in tremendous heartbreak. So that was kind of a side tangent story, mm-hmm. but that's, that's the cliff notes version of how we're together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love your story. Oh my gosh, that could be a whole nother and a whole nother episode. Mm-hmm. So I also love the way your energy together. And so um, there are probably so many network marketers that are so jealous of you, Sandy, because your spouse not only uh, doesn't tell you not to do this, but is doing it with you. So talk to us about there's so many spouses that don't support um their spouse and what, you know, why do you think that is? And what do you think we can do or what can people do to ease that situation a bit? Mm. I would say it probably comes from uh, kind of where I was before I really understood what this was, a lack of education, a lack of understanding. If a spouse truly knew what could be created with the vehicle of network marketing, I can't imagine that they would be unsupportive. Um, I think a great resource that's really helped a lot of people that we work with is a documentary called The Rise of the Entrepreneur by Eric Worre. So when we have, when I have someone reach out that says, I really want to do this, but my wife isn't supportive or my husband isn't supportive, I'll say, hey, will you watch this one hour documentary, write down any questions, and then come to me with any hard questions, any fears, any hesitations, and let's have an open dialogue about it. And just be really open and honest and share, like, what is it that you're skeptical about? What is it that you're unsupportive surrounding? I feel like you could also add to this. Yeah, Sandy nailed it. It's it's simply a lack of understanding. We fear the unknown. When we don't understand something, we're fearful of it. And most people just don't understand the network marketing business model. So it, once they get to that point of understanding, it's really bridging that gap, right? Getting them there. And then like, oh, and just speaking to spouses on either side, husband or wife, whichever side may be unsupportive. I just want to speak to in understanding this, realize that this day and age, network marketing, I'll speak for generally speaking, is a pretty low investment. Like you're not investing, you're not taking out hundreds of thousands of dollars alone to start a small business. It's a relatively low investment. And a lot of times you're getting product that you would use, you know, from that if it's a product driven business. And from there, you know, there you can start a business, you can create a business and it's up to you. It's part time. It's what you put into it. You'll get out of it. And what happens, what I've seen over the past few years, even if someone made zero dollars, let's just say, let's use that example, the growth, if they're, if they're plugged in to the community, there's leadership training, there's personal development, like the person they become in the community they find there, That's there's worth fulfillment it in there. That's worth it in itself. The growth journey and the community and the fulfillment you get from that totally separate from the financial side is everything. So if anything, like your spouse is there, is finding community and is growing as a person, like you should, you should want them to do this. Like you should want them to do it for that, let alone the opportunity they have to bring additional, you know, cash flow into your family's life. I think it's, it's like a no brainer to me. It feels like a win-win. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. And I see that too. And a lot of times what I've recognized in my own personal experience, as well as coaching and leading teams is we are responsible for how we show up and share what we share with our significant other. Um, You know, if we're always talking about things that are bothering us, well, that's all they're hearing and they want to fix those things. And so it's no wonder that they don't get in line with what you're doing if they're only hearing about the problems because they're your person that you talk to about that stuff. So I know that I'm I'm really thoughtful about what I'm sharing um, with my with my with my husband about the business versus maybe what I'm talking to my um, support team uh, and someone that's a mentor to me in the business and what I'm working through with them and uh, helping my husband catch the bigger vision of why we are doing this and what this means for us in our mission as a family and there's just so much around that and and, and speaking of that I also run into the situation where a couple 
one starts the business, the other one decides to join them in the business, and then they sort of step all over each other. Mm -hmm. Um, How I would love to hear from you all about how do you master the dance of who's responsible for what so that you are twice as productive versus like bumping against each other in opposite you know, duplicate endeavors. I love this question. I will be honest and say it's a dance. We're still figuring out every (laughs) single day. (laughs) School's never out for the pro. Yes. Um, But we love blending our personal life and our business life all together. And so we have weekly, we call them Criddity's Connections. It's like our little family meeting. And we go through like personal things, like anything from household and what's going on in our personal life to okay, let's break down like who's in charge of what in our business. And so I think communication is key. I also think, you know, it could be easy to feel territorial or um, resentful if your spouse comes into something that you've already built and you're kind of like, you don't know what it took to build this. So I think it's good to have clear communication and a foundation up front. When Wade partnered with me, we had a kind of, you know, discussion where I'm like, listen, like, what I've done over the past six months, like I want you to fully understand like what it takes. And so Wade took it upon himself. He made his own list of people he was gonna reach out to. He did all the steps that it takes to start a business. He was doing the reach outs, he was doing the follow-ups. He never just partnered with me and then didn't know what it took to do that. So I think it's really key to like, as your spouse joins you, Um, if that's something that you're looking to do, to have them do the same onboarding steps that you did so they fully understand, would you say? Yeah, I think there's different layers to it, right? Some partnerships might be, okay, let's say one partner, one spouse built the business and the other is jumping in. At that point, you can evaluate, okay, what what are your strengths? Who's the business builder? Likely it's the person who already built it. If that person's the business builder, one layer of partnership can be, in, in my coming in, what are my partner's strengths? What weaknesses can I take off the table? What are my strengths? Where can I come in? Maybe it's systems and strategy and numbers and different things like that and goal setting. That's definitely his strengths. <laughs> Maybe it's that side and you're like, okay, I will take on all this. Maybe it's the administrative stuff and be like, if I can free up my partner to do what he or she is best at, maybe that's people, that's coaching, that's networking, that's enrolling people and, and getting people into the business. Like figure out where you balance each other best, but the best partnerships we've found, and that's great. That's great because often where we found when a partnership has a vision for their life together and they're aligned and moving towards it, it's incredible. But at the end of the day, the purest form of partnership is if you're both in the trenches together and you still figure out your strengths. I still do more of the systems and numbers stuff, but I'm also in the trenches on the front line talking to people connecting with people, building the business as if I was by myself. And when you do that, there's this buy-in from you and your partner's like, oh, I I see you. I see you doing what I'm doing too. And we're in this fully together. So that is like the the deepest layer, I would say of it. Um, But you definitely come back to figure out strengths and weaknesses and where you can balance each other out. What I love about that is you basically describe a strategy for a business and it's treating it like a business, not like a hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, if you treat it like a hobby, it'll cost you like a hobby. If you treat it like a business, it'll reward you as a business does. And I love that you've put in place some standard protocol for business building in what it is that you're talking about there. So what do you find is the biggest misconception or objection? I mean, have you ever ran into any objection or encountered any uh, pushback about it being network marketing? Oh, absolutely. There's <laughs> yes. been many things and I understand them completely. So I always come from it from a standpoint of like feel felt found because I once felt that way as well. I would say the biggest hesitation I probably hear from people is that it's a scam or it's, they don't understand the business model. Like they're like, Oh, it's one of those things. So you only, you get paid when you sign people up. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. This is um, a consumer a consumable product-based business. So we only get paid in the exchange of product, right? The same way Target only gets paid if you leave Target with having bought something, that's the same thing. And so I think people have this misconception that in network marketing, we're just recruiting and we're sharks looking to sign people up and like make money off of that. And so I think educating people on how this is just a different distribution method versus you know a business that has a brick and mortar model of selling products 
Um, I think educating people on that is probably the, like the biggest misconception. I think, yeah, to, I, I agree with Sandy. However, I'm going to expand upon that because that is actually not my biggest feedback that I get. But in expanding on that, I think that's most people. They just don't understand the business model that it's a different business model from traditional. And if you want to seek a life that's not typical, you got to move different. To, to live different, you got to move different. This is a different vehicle. I think it's a better vehicle. I think personally, I think it's a way better vehicle. So it comes from a point of understanding the business model. If someone approaches me and says, oh, isn't that one of those pyramid scheme things? Like I use Sandy's feel felt found. We all should like, oh my gosh, this is how you feel. It's a pyramid scheme. I felt the same exact way. You know, I went, went into finance. I was doing the traditional salary and the, had the 401k. But what I found is it's an alternative business model. And I'll go into it and I'll go into also, I'll, you got to have some self-confidence there when answering that question. Like, you know me, let's say you know the person. Like, do you think, don't you think I'm smart? Do you think I would sign up for a pyramid scheme? First of all, those are illegal. Second of all, like, and you go into what Sandy was just talking about. We get paid on exchange of products. This is just a different business model. And what I love to use, if I had one sentence to sum up our business, it's by the quote by Zig Ziglar. If you help enough people get what they want, you'll have everything you ever needed. That's what this business model is in one sentence. I don't like get paid to just sign people up and this and that. I get paid if I can help people be successful. If I go and help people find health for our particular business and build a business and I help enough people find success, whatever that looks like for them. Maybe it's a little extra money every month. Maybe it's going to the top of the company. If I can help them be successful, I'll have everything I ever wanted and needed. That's what this business model is. And when you position yourself as a business person, you take this seriously and you have a business, not a hobby, people respect that. When you come into that conversation, people respect that. So for me, I had the business background. People didn't really hit me with the, oh, that's a pyramid scheme thing because I had built that respect and rapport over my career. What I get the most of, oh, I don't, I don't have enough time for that. I, you know, I'm so busy. I got a full-time job. I got, you know, kids running around. It's crazy. We're doing all these things. And I just asked them, if you keep doing what you're doing, where will you be in five years? If you don't have time now, what's going to change? Because for things to change, you have to make a change. And you kind of got to hit them with that. Where all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I haven't thought about if I just keep doing what I'm doing day in, day out, is my life going to look pretty similar five years from now? Yeah. So it's not about not having time. We all have the same time. It's what are you prioritizing? And if you prioritize building a business part-time around your business schedule, this is a business that, that builds time into your life. Now it takes work and time, but this is something, this is that pivotal point, that inflection point in your life potentially that could make that change to having freedom over your time. So time is the biggest thing for me, but people think you're jumping into this job. It's not a, it's not a job. It's an opportunity. Most people are trained to look for jobs. What I've found is successful people look for opportunities. And this isn't a 40, 50, 60 hour a week thing. You can make it that if you want. That's a lot of work, but I think we're full time. We do this. I don't think we work 40 hours a week. And I can't even tell because it's that lifestyle business. Everything we do is building, you know, the business. So it just kind of all blends in, in a good way. Yeah. I think the time thing is, you know, it goes back to people not understanding the business. It's like, what do they think, you know, we do every day and, you know, what are we doing with our time? This is so much about fitting it into the nooks and crannies of your life and, and can be done by busy people. Um, so what do you most appreciate about this business? Hmm. I would say the community, the people that are attracted to growing themselves and building, you know, a legacy for future generations to come, like being around like-minded people that want to better themselves, better the community, better the planet. Um, I would say that is priceless. I've never been around so many like-minded people that are obsessed with becoming better and growing their mindset. And that to me is in itself, like I always say, if I never made another penny, I would still be involved in this industry because of the people that were around. And, you know, the, um, the belief that is constantly breathed over you and the life that is constantly breathed into you, it's just, 
I've never seen anything like it. I would, that, say, I would say it's the people. The people are amazing. It's this, you know, the people, they breathe belief into you and your life and your dreams. Like this business has enabled us to dream bigger than we ever could have before. For me, I think it's the impact. Like I was sitting at a desk making a good living, but I didn't have impact in my life. I was helping already wealthy people get wealthier. And I started to think, what's my legacy? Like, I'm just doing this to pay the bills to, you know, what am I doing this for? And I really started to think about legacy and legacy, you know, what you leave behind, what's beyond you. And that can be through children, through generations, but also through building something that lasts beyond you. That's what you're doing in a network marketing business. And it's been a vehicle. I look at a network marketing business as a vehicle to make an impact. And me going out, I could help, you know, so many people on my own, but what if I leveraged my impact? What if I helped other people do what I do? So my positive ripple, my impact started to spread and leverage and multiply in the world far beyond what I could do alone. There's an African proverb, you wanna go fast, go alone. You wanna go far, go together. What I've realized in building you know, a few different businesses is when you have a, a dream, who's ever built an amazing thing, a dream, like an, whatever on their own? Like it takes a team. It takes a team. When you have a, a dream, build your dream team and go help a lot of people back to Zig Ziglar, help enough people get what they want. You'll have everything you ever need. So it's that vehicle to impact people and leave that like legacy beyond what I could do by myself. I love that. So I always love asking people that have been in this business for a while um, this question because I it's so many different things, but I'd love to hear from both of you. What do you think is is the most important factor to somebody um, achieving success in this business? I think it's closing the back door and having the no matter what attitude. It doesn't matter how long it takes to achieve X, Y, Z, you're going to do it. I see so many people start this and if in two months they haven't gone into a qualification or promoted or made a certain amount of money or you know helped their first customer or something like they just quit. And so I think you have to have grit. You have to have tenacity. You have to be consistent. You have to believe that your story is your story and it's going to unfold for you the way that it's supposed to, but just like trusting the process and being coachable and showing up every single day. I see people treating this like, you know, they maybe check in a couple times a week. And I'm like, I heard someone recently share, like, can you imagine if you treated your kids the way you're treating your business. Like, let's say you were going to treat your kids like, okay, I'm going to feed you breakfast. And then the phone's ringing this and that. And you're like, well, well, I'll feed you at lunch. And then someone was knocking on the door and this and that. It's like, oh, we'll feed you for dinner. And then next thing you know, there's a flood in your house and you're like, I'll have to feed them tomorrow. And you just didn't feed your children that day. Like you can't do that. Like that's neglect. Right. And so the same thing is with this business. Like you need to treat it as if it's like, if you're looking to build, a business and become a network marketing professional, you need to treat it as if it were this child that's depending on you. You need to check in on it every single day. And so, yeah, I would say it's it's being consistent and gritty and tenacious. I love that consistency. I mean, everything we want is on the other side of consistency, right? No matter what it is, a business, a relationship, our health, any anything. I think for me, what I've realized, a pattern I see in successful people, especially within network marketing, is vision. I think vision, I heard this quote, vision is the genesis of all greatness. Like you have to see where you're going before you get there. And oftentimes the path is invisible. You're like, I see the life that I want to build and the business I want to build, but you have no idea how you're going to get there, but you have to have that vision and you have to have clarity in it first, because then from there, it builds that belief in you that I can get there. And of course, it takes action and consistency. You have nothing without that. But I think it really starts with the vision. And when you think about it, I like that we're sharing, you know, practical stories. You have to have clarity on what you want, right? And you have to ask for it and you have to have a vision for it. If you're just like, mm, I'm going to start this. We'll see where it goes. I don't know. I, like, I, I, I don't know. We'll just see. No, you should know exactly where you want to go. I want to be traveling the world with my family, have time freedom, bring my business with me. And this is, will be our predominant business that we work on. I want to live in Switzerland for three months. I want to go to Australia, whatever it is you want, like get so specific with it. If you were to go to a restaurant tonight for dinner, 
would you just say the you know say the waiter or waitress comes up the server comes up would you say i'll, I'll take food i think right that's over here I'll, I'll just give me food they'd be like uh okay what food you, no you get specific you say i'll take the ribeye medium rare sweet potato on the side i'm doing no gluten and dairy this month so make sure there's no butter on it i'll have the side of broccolini and i'd like an iced tea with lemon, please. Thank you. I'll also take salt and pepper on the side. No, you get so specific with it. And then you get exactly what you want. And so you got to do the same thing with your vision and your dream for your life and your business, like have a crystal clear vision for it. And then like Sandy said, start to move towards that every day consistently. And, and one day you're going to realize I'm here. And now my vision is even bigger. I love it. Yeah, that uh, I love how your just back to what I mentioned earlier, your your approach to treating this like a business from the strategic planning to the monitoring results to the recalibrating if the results that you if the if the actions you took weren't getting you the results that you want. It's just business, business, business mixed with passion, fun, and service, you know, serving others and leading others to help them get what they want. So I just love your approach to that. And I'm so excited to be able to share this with our audience and with our followers. As we wrap up, we love to ask a couple of questions just for fun in closing. The first one is, what are you loving these days? What is something that's making your life easier? Okay, something I'm loving these days, this isn't necessarily related to my business, but it kind of is, is my Peloton. <laughs> yes, yes, I me love too. it. You're speaking oh, Lauren's we're language. We're gonna need to ride together. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. I've always, um, I don't know, working out is not a strength of mine. It's not something that comes super naturally to me. And so having a Peloton in my home, there's no excuse to not pop on that thing for like 20 or 30 minutes. And I, I'm, I'm competitive. So I love, you know, being able to see what I did last time and beat that. So that's something that's just helping my mindset and starting my day out strong because I'm starting the day, like having achieved something that just feels really good. So that's I, something I would say. <laughs> so good. Yeah. We both love it. Um, and I, I love seeing Sandy on it and she's jamming out and like at yeah. six fifteen in the morning, she's yeah. like blasting like this music, like club yeah. mix and like hitting it. Hard. She's <laughs> like, I'm going to PR today, baby. I said, yes, you are. <laughs> We speak life over each other in this household, just pure affirmations. <laughs> yeah. um, something that's making our life easier, what we've realized, you know, I guess the older we've gotten is we aren't good at everything. And there's things that we resist and our energy leaks in our life. I'm, I don't like speaking negative life over myself, but I'm not good at like putting my clothes away and keeping super tidy and neat. So like right now, actually, as we do this, we've, we have someone come every two weeks to clean her home and that's her business. And that's what, what she is mm -hmm. doing as a business and is good at, and she's really good at it. I'm not. And so that's something we realized, whoa, that frees up our time to, to build our business, to do things we're passionate about. Like, because I resist it. And then all of a sudden her house is, is messy. And I think a messy space leads to a messy kind of mind and brain and you're disorganized everywhere. And it's like, gosh, what do I do? Oh my gosh. And you end up doing nothing. So it's a huge energy leak. So that's something maybe not as fun as Sandy's Peloton, but that has been huge in our life. And I think what really popped into my head, I'm just, we're, we are so passionate about the network marketing industry and business model and just doing the same work that you guys do. We, we want to make this like cool. I literally want people to be like, I'm definitely getting into network marketing. Like I truly think this is a business model of the present with where we're at in the world right now, with people wanting to work from home, with the world adapting with what we have to offer, the e-commerce turnkey platform, what comes with owning your own business and being an entrepreneur. Like I, literally I, we're on a mission to make it like, yeah, heck yeah. Like, are you in that yet? Why wouldn't you be? Like, I, I also want to break the mold of, you know, we'll sit knee to knee in a living room. Like, no, I want to throw pool parties, like, like opportunity parties and different things. But anyways, beyond that, we, realize we need to focus daily on our business. And so many people ask us, okay, what do you do daily? That we created a resource really for ourselves that we knew if we helped ourselves, we would help other people with it. Like you guys creating this podcast. And we create a 90 day habits journal. We find a lot of our habits are built over 90 day cycles. Businesses in 90 day cycles. Habits are built in 90 day cycles. 
So what you can do in 90 days when you're focused on that is amazing. And then it's like Sandy said, consistently showing up for your business day after day. So we broke it down to what we do. And this business, again, isn't working an eight hour, nine to five day. You're working on your network marketing business. You can do a lot in a dedicated focused hour. So we broke it down to 60 minutes of daily focus, 20 minutes of mindset to set your mind up right for the day with gratitude and, and a morning routine. Then your to-do list and your non-negotiables, 20 minutes of building relationships, connecting with people, offering what you have to offer, 20 minutes of follow-up. Who have you connected with? Who are you circling back with? And then sharing your wins for the day and just doing that day after day. We created this 90 day habits journal that is like making, we are loving it for our business because it's that daily accountability buddy. And we can look over 90 days and say, oh, this, this is why my business is where I'm at. This is either full or it's empty. So that has been a huge resource for us too. Oh, I love that. And we'll put a link to that in our show notes, because I'm sure a lot of people listening are going to say, wow, I could use that. And I'd like to have that. That's awesome. I'm glad that you created it. It sounds amazing. Thank you. We'll have to do a special rad discount for, for your guys' listeners. We'll figure that out offline. All right. All right. Well, so in closing, what is something I ask this question on each interview, because I want to spotlight that business owners in the network marketing industry are generous. We generate and we work hard to generate so that we can be generous and we're philanthropic and we care about causes. Um, so I love to spotlight what causes do you care about? What are you, what are you giving back to these days? Mm. We love giving back. To be honest, we don't have like a set organization that we give back to. We love hearing what there is a need for in our community. So for example, like most recently at Christmas, it came to our attention that a friend of a friend could not afford Christmas presents for her kids, couldn't afford a Christmas tree or a meal or anything. And so we adopted a family and we sponsored their entire Christmas. We made sure that all those kiddos had gifts, mm -hmm. that they had a Christmas tree, that they had a feast to eat at mm -hmm. Christmas. And so to us, it speaks to our heart to share someone that's like somewhat connected, even if it's you know, one or two or three or four degrees removed, someone that's like, hey, Sandy and Wade, like when you have more, you can do more, give more, be more, bless more. Are you able to help this family? And we were happy to do that. So that's just one example. Yeah, there's been a few examples of that over the previous year or two and just really seeking to help someone who needs it in, in our network or network of networks. And that's been pretty special because there's a connection there. We also, let's see, we do feed seven kids in Haiti every month, but that's just kind of like a recurring thing. Mm -hmm. And it's cool to see the postcards and get to know their faces. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome too. I'm really looking, it's been on my heart. I want we give our money. I'd like to give our time. Like I'd like to go on a trip to say something like build homes in Africa or mm -hmm. Haiti or mm -hmm. feed children or whatever it is like in, a need in the world. I'd like to do that. I haven't I think asking it is given or when you're seeking something and seeking you. So I'm putting that out there. I'd like to do a, a trip to give time and, and likely money to a cause or an organization. Um, I think that'd be pretty special. Oh, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. And I'm sure, you know, you never know, Wade, there may be an opportunity for you to give your specialty in what you um, have in finances mm. and in managing finances. Um, mm -hmm. There could be something. I heard this great discussion the other day um, on a podcast I listened to, and this attorney got involved with this thing and ended up creating this project where these attorneys provide their time for free to help um, traffic victims. Mm -hmm. And um, you just never know where that's going to lead you to. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, what we have to give is also our knowledge and our expertise and our experience. So that could be something that comes around for you as well, is being able to um, take what you've learned in terms of finance and apply it to some area of need that can't afford to hire somebody for it. So um, you'll never know. You'll have to keep me posted if that okay, happens. I will. So, <laughs> so very, idea. very good. Well, hey, thank you all. Janine, did you want to say something else to wrap up? Just thank you guys so much. You are such beautiful souls and you exemplify the type of people that go to the top in this, in this profession. So congratulations. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you yeah. so much. We're honored to be here. Yes. Thank you for letting us hang out with you guys today. We're just excited to connect. Thank you.